die. Let's die. I'm gonna record it. <laughs> I, I absolutely you? am recording it. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. <coughs> the knife. Where's the stuffs? This is how short I am. We can't have that. Actually, I'm a little higher. A lot higher. This is how short I am in real life. Put that in. No one needs to know. <laughs> I'm coming up. <sighs> okay. All right. <clears throat> well, they see me standing next to me. That's different. The camera adds 10 feet. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. You ready? Yes. The f***. What the f***? I've been so thirsty all day. Let me like your lights. You need to relight like your lights. It's not helping. You just need to relight like your lights. Stop telling me I need electro lights. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Sort of. No, you're not. Ready? Bang! Knees Knives. I'm Jared with my lovely wife, Kara. Hello. Today we are checking out the Rake Titanium Hussar. Hussar. The M121. They also make a budget version of this in G10. Let's see if Rake did premium knives well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First up, though, we want to do our EDC Knife Channel shout out. We like to also <laughs> shout out other new YouTube uh, channels out, and one is Pocket Tank. We went and checked him out, and he seems like a really cool dude. Subscribe to him, go check him out, and yes. We'll have him linked below in the description. Okay, let's move on to that EDC item. The only reason we have this EDC item that we we're about to get to is because of who? We need to shout out Chris, <laughs> who supplied this rake to us, and also he's doing um, really great things for our channel. He's allowing us to purchase a knife every month, and then as soon as we're done reviewing it <clears throat> and checking it out, we send it back to him, and that allows us to get a lot of great content that we would not have without him. And also, it uh, just makes it kind of cool because he doesn't know what he's going to get. No, so. that's that's the really fun part about it. And yeah. also, thank you from me too. And it's really great because it's fun to just pick a knife out for somebody and hope that they like it. And, you know, it's like what people probably like, the same reason why some people send us stuff. Right, it's right. really fun. It's yeah, really fun. It is. With the knife Chris sent came this next item. The EDC item of the day. I'll hold it up for you. Okay. First off, you can take these straps and you can strap them to a door or whatever. And bang. Oh, it I thought you were going to let it fly. Okay. <laughs> There's 12 <laughs> spots so you can fit 12 knives in there. What's really cool is that this clip is going to hit here. And then this clip is going to hit here. They're intertwined. So it's not going to scratch the clips when you fold it up, as you can see. And then the straps allows you to put... Um, big, small, whatever size knives you have in there, you can tighten the clips up, tighten the straps up, and it? yep, yep, go ahead. Looks and like it works purse. out perfect. Really cool pouch, and I think they give them away sometimes, right? They uh, give them away a lot. Sometimes you'll see a thing that says like free item, free gift. Just see if that's possibly a knife roll because they do a lot of stuff. Okay. So next up, we have a viewer comment that we would like to display on the screen and read for you guys. So this one is from one of our very, very loyal viewers and commenters. Nice, nice slicers. slicers. So he commented, I know I keep saying this, but you two crack me up. Please don't ever change. Oh, and how about a shout out to the Instagram community who does not review LOL. Great review, guys clapping emojis so we uh wanted to say first of all thank you nice slicers yes yeah, thank always you very much commenting we love it uh we look forward to the regular commenters and any oh commenters God, yes. so um and we also agree with the comment which is that we want to start including the viewers more by bringing up comments we also would like to start accepting we said this once before but uh edc pictures short clips of maybe like action on your knife but the pictures are absolutely wonderful you do not have to send a video and we want to start including those in little segments for future videos just to bring you guys in because we are nothing without um the people that watch us we would just be talking to a phone there's like been like three people two three people we have not forgotten about your pictures yep. we are going to use them we just want to wait till we get um a collection going yeah we're about to start doing that here like really soon like we've got one more comment this is from carbonite gamorian 
he is one of our loyal loyal viewers and commenters somebody we look forward to seeing what he's gonna say on every video Love this guy's hilarious so this is a long one bear with me here but it is funny so he first starts by saying i'm hangry for an edc burrito explain that real quick that's the EDC burrito, it's just a knife hank and I wrap pocket tools up in it and then put a rubber band around it and then it stops the other pocket tools from being able to hit my knife and scratch it up and then also it keeps a hank in my pocket, which is awesome. And I dubbed it EDC burrito, hashtag it. Anyway, so let's continue here. So he says, <laughs> he's referring to a knife at this point now. Uh, we were talking about in the video something about dropping a knife and he goes, I can see it now, jerking it out of my pocket and crap flying everywhere. I've done that, been there. You should see the looks of the cashier and the doctor in Washington Street. First was an old antique straight razor and it hit the counter, spun and came open. <laughs> she looked down, then looked at me and <laughs> stepped back like I was going to be a bad guy. That's so funny. Second time was a folding utility type razor naff. I whipped it out like I was MacGyver or some shit saving the day to open something but then the blade flew out skidding across the reception desk directly at her she didn't even want to touch it to give it back damn social justice warrior witch <laughs> third was uh f it never mind i did not watch this video for 451 night sweethearts xoxoxo Th that's <laughs> hilarious and every single yes. one of us i'm sure that own knives can understand yes. that because you know, like when you have something in your pocket and you're trying to get to that something and you jerk your hand out and then it hits your knife and mm -hmm. there goes your knife. And then there's somebody that you don't know standing over there watching a knife fly by or land on the ground and they're just mm -hmm. looking at you like, what the hell just happened? And Hilarious. You know, we really want to thank you, Carbonite, for always commenting us. Always on supporting us. everything. Yes. And we look forward to your comments. We look forward to what you're going to say. Check so, him out on Instagram. Yeah, check him out on Instagram. And Great I'll dude. say it for him. His private messages don't work, people. Use his email. He said it 16 times. Yeah. Okay? Get your Do shit it. together. Get it together. All right, let's move on here. So next, some... I have an announcement. Yes. We have an announcement. Yes. So you'll notice, as we are a new channel, we're growing, we're learning, we're changing. Some of that change includes editing. And with that editing comes some people who may be a bit wary, thinking that we're going to change or be like some like polished you know, I won't name any names, but like really famous kind of EDC channel. And that's not the goal here. We do not take out mistakes when we edit. We don't take out those little moments that make us us. We don't take out anything that changes anything. The only things that we ever edit out of a video is dead space, uh, really long uhs, um, 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 ums, all that. Uh, I'll leave that one in though. And uh, <laughs> but no, we even so, a lot of times I don't even take that out. It's just to make the video not three hours long, to make it more watchable. Uh, because what did you tell me about the reason why we actually yeah. started doing that editing at all was because we looked at our analytics. And in our analytics, people were only watching a few minutes. And when you have a 30 minute video and people are only watching a few minutes, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And for those that do watch the entire video, that's awesome and we love that. But we gotta make it at least enjoyable for, yeah. for other people and maybe even for you guys too, you know? Uh, obviously, both of us are talkers, so I just wanna <laughs> be very clear that the only time, oh, if you see a cut, mid-sentence, anything like that, it's literally because we probably said something 80 times in a row yeah. and we're just taking it out. Yeah. And because you don't probably want to hear it more than the one right. time we want to say right. it. So, um, all right, that is that. Let's go ahead and get some specs for this beautiful knife on the screen. Let's do it. All right, guys, here's the Rake P801. It's a little bit smaller than the Hussar. Next up is the Kershaw Bare Knuckle. You guys can pause on any of these if you want to. The Kubi <clears throat> KU179CF, also known as the Kubi Airs. Then the Ganzo FH12 which is the stainless version of the FH11. And the Benchmade Griptilian Large. And one more, 
the Spyrco PM2. Also, shout out to Woodland Tactical for loaning us the PM2. Check him out on YouTube and Instagram. We'll link him below. Right. The materials on this thing. You have an S35 VN blade steel, which is made for cutlery. So it's a very good blade steel for knives. Is it made for knives? It's also got a titanium frame lock and a stainless steel pocket clip. Stainless steel pocket clip. The pivot has stainless steel ball bearings. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys a picture of the nice knife disassembled on the screen right now. All right, this blade is a trailing point blade, which leads to basically a straight back design. The spine of the blade is basically straight. Just a little tiny upsweep. Also, the blade is 3.6 inches long, but has a cutting length of 3.75. So as you yep. see, the cutting length is a little bit longer than the actual blade itself. Okay, also, the, it is about 19 thousandths behind the edge. It does have somewhat of a thin blade, and it's not a very tall blade. So the other model that they do have that uh, Rake made has a little bit more slicier of a blade. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the P. I don't know the name of it, but you're going to show a picture of it. I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a picture of that model up on the screen for you guys right now. Oh. That was my job. Okay. And I did it. Yeah. I and said now, it. Now, the, the fit and finish on this thing is pretty decent. Um, it's nothing exceptional, but it's not bad. It's pretty good. Also, there's nothing to complain about for the most part. We'll, we'll get to a little bit farther. Um, the mill lines, mm -hmm. you yeah, can let me see. see if I can sh they might be hard to show, guys. I'm just going to tell you right now. They are the smallest. They're very subtle. They're, they're very cool that they're there. but um, The middle of the, the scales doesn't have it, but on the sides of the scales so yeah, where you're it's gonna contoured, be... you can see little tiny. So you're, you're going to see it right over here. On this part, that's what Jared was just talking about. Not in the middle, but over here. You can see it on the camera right now. It is just hard to see. So, oh, there you go. Okay, you can see them. They're ver or horizontal lines going this way. There you go. Bang. Okay. You may need glasses for that one, guys. Show them the lockup. You can take your hands down. I the don't want to stab you. The lockup is very good. It's exactly yeah, where I want on a knife. About 45, 50%. But you notice that the stainless steel lock bar insert is directly underneath yeah, the tang of the right blade, which is exactly where you want the um, the lockup to be for a new knife. Yep, there it is right there. Next inside. to hardware is it has the pivot and one standoff, so it only has two screws That's holding it together. It only has two screws bang. Hold, holding it together. And bang. Which it's T8s, and then it has T6s on the clip, T sixes on the, the lock bar, mm -hmm. and then it also has the it's a T eight right on this thing. I'm a no, it's a T six. No, oh, it's a T six. On here it is. Yeah. What, did you say all the T eights? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the the T six. This is also a T six right here on this little doohickey. It doubles as an over travel stop. This guy right here. Um. Comfortable to use. I don't know if you call that jimping or miniature stairs, but the miniature stairs work great. Uh, it's comfortable. It's I don't a, personally think it needs to be there. But it's a lock for when the blade is open. Correct. So, so yeah, over come. travel stop in the sense that when the blade is open, you're not going to ever bear down on this blade enough to push the lock out of lock up and have the blade close on you. So, so it's a lock plus an over travel stop also. Correct. Yep. And then it has pin, two pins holding the the scales Bang. not together, but from collapsing on the cells because it has the two the pivot screw and then the one T eight on the, the standoff and then two pins. So so this knife is very quick to take apart. Yes, is very, the moral of that story? Yes, very easy to take apart too. Yeah. Also the grip on it, it's a thin thinner knife, so it's going to be thin in the hand. Yep, but uh, feels. Uh, let me show on my hand next. Feels good. 
Do you see it it's in my hand? It's a little hot hand? spotty. Do you find a hot spotty? I don't um, find a hot spotty at all. In a sense of if I was very, very, very much bearing down, can I squeeze it? To be honest, it? I don't even feel the clip. I'm just saying. I don't even feel the clip. It feels comfortable in my hand. It is thin, though. I'll it's probably it's because thin. it's getting so swallowed in your hand. My hand's a lot smaller. Yeah, right. So, and I'm probably also gripping it slightly different. So when I hold it like this, these little meaty chunks of finger right here, uh, if I was, man, yeah, I, oh, wow, I didn't realize that before. If I was really? really squeezing down on this, look, I'll show you guys. I believe you. You can see right there, it was like white and stuff like that line was just, See, I don't get that I at all with my large I am a non-complainer about hot spots. So you guys know this now. If I ever say something that has a hot spot, I mean it in a sense of like if I was really, really, really using it and if it would actually bother me. Yeah. So I would say yes for me, maybe not for a larger hand. Yeah, not for a larger hand. I can squeeze it. It does have a long handle though, yeah. so you can see how much it's poking out. I can still feel out. it. You see how much it's poking out. With me, it's pretty comfortable. It's pretty rounded and nice and contoured all the way around, as you can see. Yeah, that I like. There, there's contouring all the way around the scales, and it's um, it's pretty comfortable for a big hand. <clears throat> the clip on it is a deep carry clip. It does have good spring to it. So I want to. I just want to say something really quick with the deep carry clip thing. So you see that in the specs a lot of time times and people go oh that's a good thing well just make sure that you actually really really look because on a lot of knives you'll notice deep carry but not necess necessarily positioned at the deepest point so that's going to make a difference for what sticks out just because it's deep carry doesn't mean it will carry deeply so this clip has good tension good quote. yeah just very good very good quote um it does have good tension on it but not overly tension it's perfect the only problem with it is these screws shown you got the lock on shown these screws if you look at the screws they they're domed on top but they also have straight sides on them so they should have did either just straight domed screws or inset screws i don't know why they didn't have the screws countersunk but they didn't these scales don't have any milling in them so they are thick enough that they could have done that but they did not so every once in a while it will catch on your pants putting it in the pocket since it's domed on top not necessarily all the time it went in my pocket just fine in and out just fine but sometimes it does catch all right next i'm going to do the action all right, we also just really quick wanted to show you what this finish on this clip could potentially look like. This is another rake uh, clip with a similar anodization. So I'll just show you really quick. It patinas into, honestly, what looks like a really cool bronze purpley deal going on there. So just keep in mind that that may be what this knife ending up ends up looking like for you as well. All right, let's get on to that action. Okay, all right. Now, also like the rake, the flipper tab is almost the exact same flipper tab, so the flipper tab feels just like the P801, if you ever had the P801. Um, I do not know about the Hussar, but I'm guessing it's the exact same. Hussar. But it does not have no jimping anywhere on the knife except for this button, which doesn't matter. It has miniature stands um, on it. The detent ball is right there on the close. But well, it does not have an, a reverse detent ramp. But what's cool is that it does land right there on your thumb just perfectly for the close. So the detent is not a strong detent. It's not as strong as the P801. But it's not a bad thing. You can fire it every single time without a problem. It's comfortable. Zero fatigue from clicking it. And even though it doesn't have any jimping on the back, it's very easy to press. And then with the detent being right here it doesn't matter that it doesn't have a reverse detent because when you hit it it's going to hit your thumb first and then you can just drop it so it does have good great action on the open and the close and the lock bar is chamfered all the way around and it's very very easy to get to it feels almost like a button so it works out perfect um for the comfort part and then drop for the drop it's very very smooth it's damn near free dropping i mean it's it's pretty much free dropping like you see it's i'm barely moving free dropping isn't always the goal though it's got a nice hydraulic drop and to me that is 
better than a free drop. The only time I want a free drop is if, is if it's attached to an access lock or a lock that is intended to be like For that. For a free drop, This yeah. is here's, more of a premium action, in my opinion. Here's the detent. It's a quiet yeah, one. It's, it's, it's got really good action. It really does, guys. Um, I, you know, I do like jimping on my flipper tabs normally, but this one is such a lighter detent that it doesn't really matter. Can I say something about the flipper tab? Yes. So, um, the flipper tab, the positioning of it, which you were talking about, and how you said you could flip it all day, no problem. That's one thing to me that a premium knife should have is smart flipper tab positioning. So is it angled to where it's sitting above the pivot so that you're not failing it and is it set up with a system like this one to where it's going to fly through smoothly and it does and that's something that not every budget brand nor premium brand does well that rake did very well with the um, positioning of this clip here and the shape of it it's very comfortable it does stand a little tall though and a little close to the frame but it doesn't bother you at yeah, all I, was gonna say, I don't think it and the landing yeah. port is very comfortable, so you can easily flip it all yeah. day. And landing Those right there. Those things aren't short, sharp right here no, where your finger lands or anything. Very comfortable. Okay, now let's get to the nitpicks. I only have one real nitpick um, about the screws because they're you know not inset, and if they were going to just could be dome, they shouldn't have the straight sides on them. And aside from that, that's really my only nitpick, I guess. I have one. Some people might not like the, like the button. You like, stole it. Like my baby. That was my nitpick. Sorry, baby. Well, now I'm just a waste of breath, but I'll say it. Why don't you say I don't it like now. it. Just, just say it now. I think that this thing uh, shouldn't really be on a premium model. They made another steel model, the P108, that had it on there. I didn't like it on there either. But it's a budget blade, so I was able to understand it. I think that if you're doing your frame walk lock well, you don't really need it. And I understand maybe somebody wanting it, but most people who are spending $140, which, by the way, is the price of this knife, most people who are spending that uh, know how to use and operate a knife enough to know if it's getting too unsafe to use to where the frame's going to fail. So, with that said, Good point. Good point, I David. think that the design on the show side is so nice and beautiful and simple a little pop of color and then there's just this thing and yeah. i just want it gone it's like a pimple on someone's face so yeah, pop I, guess, it off. I guess it makes uh such a straightforward design oh, it makes me unique. angry okay now <laughs> let's uh talk but about you, hold on, just to be clear though i really do like the design of the knife it doesn't bother me as much as i just made it seem but yeah you made it sound like you hated the knife i just had a little rant <sighs> You know. Um, you do see the billboarding on the blade and stuff like that. You guys have already seen that. So, is this knife a pre? Did Rake do premium good? That's the question. So now, did Rake do a premium knife well? Um, we're probably gonna have a discussion about this. I think that they did a decent job, but I will say that the budget models these days are done very well. Rake did budget very good. So now, if you take their budget knife, like say this knife and you put premium uh, materials on there so premium blade steel um, titanium scales it's you know you're you're getting a good knife you're mm -hmm. already getting a premium knife Agreed. because budget knives are done so well nowadays so if you look at it from that point of view yeah they they knocked it out of the park is it anything exceptional like did they did they do anything better than other companies no i mean there's things that they could have done better like they could have did a reverse detent did they need one no so that's not something that bothers me a reverse what was that reverse word? detent oh. they didn't have to though because of the, the placement of the detent was perfect so they did that very well they could have put ceramic ball bearings they did not do that. That kind of bugs so me a yeah, little bit. Yeah, they used steel. Yeah, they used stainless steel. So they steel. didn't quite use every premium, what we would consider premium material that they could. And then the clip, they did a great clip. Is it the, steel or titanium? It is, it is steel, okay. which doesn't bother me too bad. I wish, I, I like uh, titanium clips. Some people don't. It looks beautiful though. I like that, but the screws, they could have did that a little bit better. It is a $140 knife. They could have did it. Like, I guess this, these ones are just rounded, but they poke out too. So let's put it this way. So in, in sort of a conclusionary way, 
the knife has to me what looks like a fancy design. Now they already did this in a budget model, it so the design noble. is just kind of redone, which is fine. But the center of the titanium, there is no milling, there's no weight relief. I don't think it really needs it. Some people may. Yeah, there's no However, cutouts at all. They didn't, every place that they could have used premium material, they didn't. Now, that may be for cost reduction, but like he just said, it's still $140. Um, I mentioned before about this, I don't think that's something a premium knife should have, the little extra lock there. And then, um, other than that though, with those little tiny, which I still consider just nitpicks, I think overall, if you job. spend $140 to check out a premium rig, in which we have not checked out the other design, so this which I this want one. to really bad. So yeah, it says a lot. This you will not be disappointed with. No, I think it no, is a gentlemanly or womanly knife. I think it is a beautiful design. It's an original design, no matter how much people. You they know. did contour everything all the way around. Yes. The action's very the good. The action to me is the part that they did very well. Like that to me is the most premium <clears throat> part of this knife. Uh, um, I don't know how thick the other model's uh, blade steel is, but um, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it's a little slice here. But like I said, they contoured everything all the way around. They got the action down pat. Mm -hmm. It's um, They got the centering. It's dead balls at. Came centered. Good. I mean, yep. it's perfectly centered. Came sharp. And it's, it's an elegant design. It's very easy to take yeah, apart. Very elegant. easy to clean. That's what it is. It's a good knife all the way around. So I like the knife. I think they did a pretty good job. I would recommend it. Obviously, any knife you put any knife in front of me, and I can come up with something that they could do better. So mm -hmm. they did a good job. Budget is so good these days that if they put titanium on a knife, like you just said, it's yeah. probably going to come out to be decent. Um, it's not always easy to do great action, but they were able to to successfully do that so we say yes yeah check it out i like break thank you oh my knee oh baby i hit it